never saw this coming. So it's uh, it's a real treat. I'm truly honored. So thank you so much. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'm gonna get out of here because it's 95 degrees. But I love all of you, and uh, thank you so much. insights into who Norman is. Um, if I could tell you the number of Photoshop designs I have for different hairstyles for Daryl, it would fill five computers. Uh, <clears throat> he's been described by the likes of Guillermo del Toro, John Carpenter, and Frank Darabont as thoughtful, intuitive, and instinctual. And that's not descriptions of his work ethic, that's descriptions of who he is as a person. He would take the shirt off his back, He's the kind of guy who will roll up his sleeves and dig in and fight for uh, what he believes. He infuses his characters with these traits. Um, and on top of all the other things, he's also a restaurant together that 
we literally came up with the idea because we thought after working really hard, we wanted a place that we could have a beer and enjoy each other's company and the company of our friends. So there's a lot of pluses and minuses to being Norman's friend. The plus is you're Norman's friend. The minus is I have a truckload of stuff that people have given me saying, can you please give this to Norman? Because I really, he would love it. And I try to do that, but he has unflinchingly loyal fans. A lot of them that are over there, a lot of them that are over there. Those fans are what keeps the walk ahead alive. And it helps us here. So thank you for that, and it's it's my honor. It's my honor to be here. Uh, and uh, and help unveil Norman Star. So thank you. John Bringall. chiggers and the spiders and the snakes. We've been duking it out in the woods and we all thought of ourselves as a bunch of Billy and Betty badasses by Daryl's first day. We didn't actually see him until we were on camera. He came lumbering into the frame out of those thick Georgia woods as if somehow he'd been there all along. He was covered with some crazy mixture of mud and blood and grime, a rope with uh, hanging dead squirrels over his shoulder. He didn't say hello to us uh, at first, and it wasn't off-putting or rude, it just was. It gave off both this quiet strength, but also this wounded vulnerability. And that would go on to define one of the greatest characters in television history. See, after the scene, I decided to break the ice. We were supposed to do a scene after that. There's gonna be a fight between me and Norman, so I walked over to him cautiously, and I asked him how he wanted to block the scene. Norman just looked at me and said, well, let's just fight and see what happens. And I loved him instantly. But it wasn't what he said. It was how he said it. There was no bravado. There was no fake machismo that plagues so many actors. There was a glimmer and a glint in his eye that showed both how grateful he was to be there and how seriously he took what he was doing. There was nothing fake or phony to my first meeting with Norman. And 12 years later, Considering one of the people I love most on this planet, I have never seen him be boastful. Never seen him be unkind or dishonest. In fact, I go as far to say that Norman is allergic to dishonesty. He's incapable of pretension. And it doesn't matter if it's on set or off set, traveling the country, meeting fans, or by our dear friend Scott Wilson in his final days, I have only seen Norman tell the truth. I've only seen him be kind. I have only seen him inspire joy. One of our friends, Stephen Young, says, Norman is the great truth teller. He keeps me honest. He keeps all people honest. I love him. See, I've never seen someone loved and adored by people the way Norman is. But honestly, I've never seen anyone love the way that Norman loves. Our friend Sarah Wayne Cowley, she says, Norman instinctively celebrates life and those around him with a devotion and abandon that are infectious. When you're around Norman, you don't just like him. Better. What a magical gift. To me, Norman's an artist in the truest sense of the word. There's always this whiff of mystery around him, this whiff of playfulness. Norman can both be menacing and completely approachable at the exact same time. Andy Lincoln said, Norm could have been many things in this life. An artist, a model, photographer, career criminal, he could even have been a tennis player. And Andy wants you to know that Norman trained with Andre Agassi, and he only quit because Andre had better hair. But thankfully, Andy says, Norman fell into acting. He believes he went to his first audition on either a drunken bet or to impress a girl. Norman's a 14-year-old romantic trapped in the body of an old-school rebel. A new wave punk with an eye for Basquiat, he's got the effortless cool of McQueen with the sense of humor of Kenny from South Park. 
<laughs> to me, Norman is a rebel. He's a rebel in the truest sense of the word. And like most rebels, Norman has a deep sense of justice. My friend Norman has a way of calling out bullshit, and he knows on an atomic level what is right and what is wrong. Again, he is enormously kind and generous, but he's particularly that way to the outsider or to the underdog. Because I believe maybe deep down that's where he's most comfortable. Andy says that in a world that seems more concerned with what you think than what you do, Norman very quietly does a lot and makes very little noise about it. Norman, you are completely singular. You walk through your life and your art with a uniqueness that totally sets you apart. To me, this is ultimately what being a star is all about. And there is without a doubt only one Norman Reedus. Beyond everything, for me, it's your eternal and undying love for your children and Diane that impressed me the most. This last act of yours, it's been the most beautiful, brother. I love you with my whole heart. You continue to inspire me as an artist and as a friend, as a father, as a husband, and I'm so honored that I get to be here with you today. And I know I speak for all of us here and so many around the world. We love you, Norm Nice. Congrats, man. here, which is, yeah, thank you for putting up with me all these years, you know, I know it wasn't easy, uh, and then passing that baton, Diane, I love you so much, thank you for giving me a beautiful family, uh, a home environment that's so joyous and fun every day, thank you for that, I love you. Uh, and Nova, oh my God, you gave me Nova. Uh, and then Mingus, you've always, yeah, my son Mingus is here, who I love dearly. You've always made me most proud. You're the proudest thing I've ever done, you know, and it means a lot to me that you came here. Uh, the other two girls in my life, Joanne, Tracy, uh, I don't make a move. Talking to you guys, you know that. Sometimes those calls come at 3, 3 a.m., so I, thank you for putting up with me as well. Uh, I, I, there's a lot of people here I work with. I gotta thank AMC for giving me this opportunity to play this amazing character. Uh, there's so many of you all that are quite, you know, you all. Uh, it's been a real joy. It's, it's made me a better everything. Better, better father, better friend. work ethic that I enjoy having now, which I didn't have before. Um, and thank you to the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce for this honor. I so, never saw this coming, so it's uh, it's a real treat. I'm truly honored, so thank you so much. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'm going to get out of here because it's 95 degrees. But I love all of you, and uh, thank you so much. Let's hear it again for Norman Vitas. 
I see the taco. What's the best thing uh, to order over here? Okay, the first thing is, I don't know if you're familiar with the bulgogi taco, yes. but I actually use the rib, prime rib meat, Whoa. and then marinate with bulgogi sauce, the Korean famous for. And the combination really works. And I think it's something that you never tasted before. That's like our number one sell. And also, everybody knows about tripas, but I marinate it in Korean style. Beautiful. And also pastor, that the Latin Americans are famous for, I marinate in Korean style also. So it's the same. I kept the original of the Latin flavors, but the meat itself, uh, it is Korea, so it's like a really uh, good fusion that worked out together. It's very so now. Yeah, it is, it is, it is. And I believe there's some other Korean places, but they were saying it didn't feel right. But um, when I open up the street vending, I'm getting a really good review, so I think uh, I did the right job. Beautiful.